to talk cars, have a little fun, serious talk, and a ton of passion with Steve, Felicia, and the rest of the gang here on Drive Friendly. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Drive Friendly. I'm your host, Steve Rosansky from Friendly Auto Centers in Mesa. And over to my left or your right, my beautiful bride, Felicia Rosansky of Platinum Realty. And our usual gaggle of guests, we have Richard and Kristen Morris. And we have Gabby Mazur. I don't know where Ryan is this week. Is he chiming in today? I don't know. He comes and goes. Um, so today, we're going to be talking about noises. All right. I'm going to be talking about car noises. Felicia's going to be talking about spouse. I'm sorry, house <laughs> House noises. There's that, lots of spouse noises we don't want to hear. But there's a lot of house noises that your house makes that Richard and I have some pretty good advice in case your house is making noise. And no, ignoring it is not going to make it go away. Unless it's a mouse, which in which case you probably want it to go away, but you should get it checked at anyway. But we'll talk about that later. That's right. So before I delve into um, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, noises, two big things in the news today. Um Cooper Tires is recall, recalling over half a million tires to a defect that could lead to a crash. Richard, you know, this is automotive insurance stuff. Mm -hmm. um, these Cooper Tires are sold under the brands Discoverer, Evolution, Corsair, Deegan, Adventurer, Hercules. Hercules is very popular at Big O. Good place for tires, but not for this. Backcountry, Multi Mile, Big O brand, and some under Pep Boys, Discount Tire, Mickey Thompson, Les Schwab, and Mastercraft. Um, this is a big deal because the sidewalls are collapsing without any warning. You could look at them. They look fine. These are brand new tires. These aren't used tires. So, so let me ask you a question. If all these, all these um, people who just got tires and all these companies, like, do, is there a record of it or is there a way to contact them or do they just have to listen to the news? Like, well, how does that work? Here's the thing. When you, let's say you go to a, a quality place, discount tire is a great place. And the same with us, we register the tires by the DOT numbers on the side with your name and address and everything. So in case there is a recall, you're notified. Same thing with any appliance. If you ever get an appliance, a blender, a toaster, whatever, fill out that stupid little card. It's important because if there is a recall, they're going to notify you and take care of that. Is it the responsibility of the shop that sells you the tires? Nope. It's to consumer. Sign you up? It's consumer responsibility. And even if they don't give you a card, because some of the manufacturers we buy tires from do not give us a card, you can just go to um, tireregistration.com where you can um, register your, your tires. Now, another big recall happened today a bunch of Kias, uh, Kia Evolution, and um, uh, I forget the other one. I'll get that to you in a second. We're recalled because the anti light brake system may catch fire and burn the car. Oh my God. So they're telling people when you're driving? No, no, no. Actually, when it, oh, believe it or not, when, when it's parked is the biggest problem. So um, 2017 through 21 Kia Sportage and 2017 through 2019 Kia Cadenza. Cadenza. Kristen, so as long as you're it. driving it, your car won't go on fire. But if you park yeah. it, you may not come back to so it. So they're telling you. <laughs> wait, wait, Kristen, do you have that car? I have a 2019 Sportage. Yeah. Kia yes. Sportage. So do you, but wait, there's a thing. Do you have the adaptive cruise control in your car? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. You don't know. And it when was you set just the in cruise, getting the, serviced. Right, so. When you set the cruise control, does More it keep. Do you use cruise control? Yes. You do. Now, when yes. you use it, can I ask my questions, please, without any interruptions? <laughs> When you use your adaptive cruise control, adaptive cruise control will automatically stop the vehicle if you're too close or if the car wants to uh, diverge in, uh, to move into another lane, does it steer you back? We do not have adaptive cruise control. I okay. am the adaptive cruiser <laughs> when I'm driving. All right, those, all right. The ones with adaptives are the ones that are when, being When you recalled. got married, did you decide which one of you was going to be in charge of that? Because you drive, know you're like, this is your job. I drive ninety percent of the time. He he enjoys driving, so and so you enjoy not that. arguing, so you let him drive, right? <laughs> I can count on two fingers how many times Felicia's driven if when we've and gone both anywhere. times he was drunk and I became the designated driver. So there you go. That's right. Because we do not drive and dr drink and drive ever. He and I have to be pretty drunk. Ever. I have to be pretty drunk to let Felicia drive. And so. he was. 
So anyway, <laughs> here's the deal. If you own one of these cars and you're not sure to go to recalls.gov or go to kia.com and you'll find out all the information. But in the meantime, if you have one of these cars, do not park it next to your house. They're telling you that. Oh, in my the, God. Look, I'm reading it right here. Owners should also park them away from structures until repairs are made because the car Jeez. will <laughs> park draw it in front that. of your neighbor's house. Yes, you got somebody you don't like, park it over there. And I got um, a client, Steve. We're that, really not telling you this. Wait, disclaimer, that's only a joke. I'm sorry. The, the um, What happens is it's drawing so much power. Just like we were charging our phone last night. We have one of those little Framuses that, you know, turn into a USB charger. I'm telling you, this thing burnt our fingers. We went to unplug it. And I, I couldn't believe how really hot it was. Hot. And, Could have roasted a marshmallow. And on that, it. and that is what current draw is. When it's drawing all that current, it generates heat, and that's what's happening. The car is not running when this happens, and it could draw so much where it could catch your vehicle on fire, but it could also catch your house on fire. So they're telling you, <coughs> park it in the street until then. Oh my God! But what about <coughs> people who are like living in apartment buildings? And Don't. they park it in their garage downstairs. You're a realtor. Find them a house well, so they could park <laughs> not in front of. What's Hello, America. Like Anyone who has a car like that? So Steve, <clears> I, I had a client about... that had their car burn up exactly that that way, right in their driveway. Yeah. Did you really? $40,000 claim. Poof. Oh, my all, God. All on yeah. video and everything. I saw it on Facebook before she even filed a claim. So Yikes. Yeah, it happens. Yep. Um, but I want to go back to noises and vibrations. One of the biggest things, the, the newest technology that's out there is called NVH. Not the newest technology, the newest, I guess, term. Uh, you bring it in, you bring your vehicle into, like us, I hear a vibration, I hear a noise. It doesn't ride right. Well, one, what you want to do is if you're, first of all, if you hear a noise, don't ignore it because little noises turn into big noises, which turns into you being on the back of a tow truck. But... <clears throat> Most important is when you bring your vehicle in for any noise, vibration, or harshness, and I'm going to call it NVH from now on, make sure you go for a ride with the mechanic and point out exactly the noise. Because more times than not, a customer will come to me hearing, they'll describe a noise. I say, please take a ride. No, 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 I don't have time. I'll hear something completely different than what the, uh, the customer says, and I end up fixing the wrong thing because the customer did not take the time to fix it. Although they had a legitimate other noise that was bad, it has to be on the same, you have to be on the same page. Describe it down to the detail. When does it happen? Does it happen when the car is hot? Does it happen when it's cold? Does it happen when you're going fast, slow, left turns, right turns, hot day, cold day? Is the air conditioning on? Is the air conditioning off? The window's up, the window's down. Every little bit of information helps. Now, at Friendly Auto, what we have and a lot of shops do is we have this cool tool. I'm going to show it to you right now. Wait, I'm backwards. This is a wireless chassis ear. And what this does, you turn it on and it flashes a lot of lights, but that's not what it really does. We take this remote transmitter, okay? It's a transmitter that looks like this. Well, it's on the radio. You might want to... Okay. It's a little transmitter about the size of a small fold-over cell phone, Okay. And there's a wire that attaches to wherever you think the noise is. So if you're hearing a noise in the right front, maybe you'll put it on the spindle or on the strut. And it'll transmit that noise to this machine, which I will hook up a set of earphones to. I, I like to use the um, noise reducing ones. And I can precisely pinpoint where that noise is coming from. So if you watch the screen, I'll select channel four because that's which one I'm using. I'm gonna tap it on the desk and you can actually see the meter going louder and softer. So this enables us to determine whether the noise is coming from the front or the back, the left or the right. To many people, like I have a little deafness in my right ear, but I can hear a pin drop from my right ear. That's why I always keep I Felicia on the it. left. I knew it, I knew it. So any, that's why I keep you to my right. So um, a customer may say they're hearing it from the driver's side, but that's where they're sitting, and the noise may actually be from the other side. So it's a really cool tool to have. Uh, it's actually been updated where I can watch it in a waveform on an oscilloscope on my cell phone. So really, really cool stuff. And um, if your shop doesn't have one, go somewhere well, else. What are some of the noises that we? What are some of the more serious noises that when we hear them, we should go? I better get this to the shop now versus it can wait. Well. The cool thing, the, the one thing about noises is sometimes it's a gradual increase where you get so used to it, you don't even notice that it's there. 
uh, like a wheel bearing. Just one day, it'll start getting a little louder and louder. And you're so used to it, you don't notice it until after it's repaired. And you're like, oh, my God, this thing is so quiet now. Um, when the engine is running and you're standing still, if you hear like a ticking noise, which could be a valve lifter or a camshaft or something like that, that's a noise problem. We get that a lot because people don't check their oil enough uh, or they wait to change their oil. We have a vehicle in the shop right now. It came in with lifter noises, needs a new engine. The guy said, I don't understand. I changed my oil when the oil reminder light comes on. Well, those oil light reminders are not exactly accurate. And um, yeah, they're not AI. People think they're like artificial intelligence. Like they're not. They're just they're nothing's mechanical. looking like, at your oil. One thing flips another thing. Yeah, know? it's calculated over very hour, en engine hours versus time versus mileage. It's an inaccurate thing. The best thing: change your oil three times a year or every five thousand miles. That's um, that's another conversation. Kristen. Kristen, question: Would it help if you recorded the sound, like video recording it on your phone, bring it in and show it? It, it, it helps a little bit, but again, if we can't hear it because it loses something when you're recording it on the phone because it's also recording some of the ambient noises that are going on in the car. It does help, though, okay? Um, a ticking noise, whining noise, like if you're turning the steering wheel and you're hearing like a groaning noise, usually in the Whining or groaning because they're two different things. Whining is like this. Groaning is like, ah, oh, like that. And is it whining or groaning? You can get both. <laughs> If you're low on power steering fluid, you'll get whining. If you're out of power steering, you'll get groaning. If I have to explain that anymore, I'm going to be seriously groaning, okay? So and anyway, it will get tougher to steer. Right. So that, that's a common noise. You start your car up and you hear a loud squealing noise. Is that okay? Uh-huh. Great. Is that a belt? There's an indication of a, a loose fan belt or uh. some pulley-operated type of thing. If you're driving along... And as you get faster, there's a groaning noise that gets faster and faster. It's speed related now. So usually when it's speed related, it has something to do that's going on with the wheels. Maybe you're making a, a turn and you're hearing a clicking noise coming from one of the wheels. That could be an axle. So there's a lot of different things that'll cause moaning, crying, and apparently crying because my <laughs> wife's got a case of the giggles now. So... Uh, groaning. I, wow, moaning and groaning. I've never heard this going on in my house. Now, um, other types of noises, wind noises. Like uh, if you had a windshield put in improperly, you may hear a whistling. Are you guys done? What? No, you, guys, you guys are all laughing at me here. I'm not laughing. They're all laughing at me. Gabby, Kristen, yeah. You try know, to, you try complain to when I complain, and you complain when I'm having a good time. Of course I complain when you why. complain because you're complaining. I'm not complaining. I'm laughing. All you I'm guys having fun that with my friends. We're having a good time. We're am I not part of this? Whining and groaning. Okay. So anyway, but if you're hearing any of those kind of noises, definitely bring it in. But wind noises are a big one. Uh, especially if you had a, a windshield replaced and it wasn't installed properly, as you get faster and faster, you hear more of that wind noise coming in. So today you notice my screensaver, because we ran out of ideas, we have our dogs in the background. So you got Sonny Corinthos for well, all you general he's hospital behind. fans. You're behind. He's, oh yeah, Sonny's the, Sonny's the Arizona brown dog. Arizona brown dog. We have um, Ace, and now we have Vinny Testaverde. You can't see him, but he's back there. There he is. Yes. We named him after characters. Sonny Corinthos is on General Hospital. Vinny Testaverde, greatest Jet quarterback ever, my favorite player. And Ace, I just don't like that dog. Well, Ace makes a lot of noise, which is why we're featuring him, because today's program is all about noise. But before we get to our next segment on noise, because we're going to talk about noises your body shouldn't make when you're working out, what to do if it does. I just want to give a shout out. Just say sorry. To, I just want to give a shout out to College Bound. This is my birthday month. Gabby and I, it's both our birthday month. And Facebook... Tag me today and they're like, what's your charity for your birthday charity? And that was the easiest decision I ever made because it's college bound. I work with college bound. I support college bound. What college bound does is it takes underprivileged, underserved people in our community, students in our community who've died at least a 3.0 average. They're good students and gives them the opportunity to go to college without having to pay for it. All funds that are available through grants and we're able to find it for them. These are deserving students and the name of the game is Opportunity. What they do with it is on them, but we all deserve an opportunity. So if you want to find me on Facebook, Felicia Rosansky, if you want to submit 
ten dollars, five dollars, a dollar fifty to college bound. It'll a hundred percent of it, and I mean a hundred percent of it goes to the kids. I know that because I work with them. There, there's no administrative fee. There's no funny business. We don't even use money for a cup of coffee. It all goes to the kids to help give them the guidance that they need, to help them buy computers, to help them buy supplies, and help them get to and get through four years of college. So college bound. Great. That's great all I'm going to say. Great, great organization. Love them. So. Love Liz Paulus is my hero. She's She is a hero. So now we're going to turn back to my other hero, which is Gabby, heroin hero. I don't know what the proper way to say it is anymore. And I've been working out with Gabby for years and we were talking about noises and it came, Gabby and I were talking the other day, what are some of the noises that people hear when they work out that maybe they shouldn't be hearing or maybe it doesn't make a difference? Like what's the difference? Should I should I talk about the noises that I hear? Like a lot of my clients cussing me out. <laughs> I've heard it. Why isn't that room. healthy? That's healthy though, right? Oh yeah, get it out, get it out, get your aggression out. <laughs> I mean, like you hear a lot of weird noises, like creaking noises in your knees or like popping. I mean, things that are perfectly normal, but um, grunting, grunting, like. I uh, do that. Yeah, you know, at a uh, at um, oh, what's that gym that it says like no grunting zone oh, or whatever? Um, Planet not- Fitness. Planet Fitness. Fitness. Planet Fitness. Yeah, no grunting because it is kind of distracting. And I, honestly, I don't know if it really does if grunting helps per se, but you know, it, I guess it helps you to breathe or to force breath, which is good for exercise, obviously, because holding your breath is bad. And I know we've all seen those like uh, exercise fail videos and like the guy's like lifting heavy and then passes out i mean some of it is is breath a lot of it's the weight but stuff like that yeah like people hold their breath all the time like cracking knees shouldn't we shouldn't like that that's not a symbol or a signal like for it can something? it can definitely absolutely i mean it they're like uh tight hamstrings or tight quads maybe you've got you know inflexible hip flexors it could be arthritis it could be a number of things but not a major cause for alarm like don't be like oh my god i have arthritis and everything's falling apart it could just be it could just be muscle imbalances which is perfectly normal okay what's a what's a noise that we shouldn't hear and if we do we, is there any noise that should scare us or warn uh, us like a snapping, maybe, maybe if you have like a, like a sh- <laughs> snap, like you've popped your Achilles or something, you definitely Oops. don't want to hurt that. But no, if it, if it hurts, that's the biggest key. I mean, if you're, if you have like creaking or cracking or anything like that and there's no pain, it's probably nothing major. Yeah. I what about, I know, I know that Kristen is a big tennis fan and what, what's, what is her Maria Sharpova, Sharpova? What noise does she make? <laughs> no, no, wait. Which one is it? It's a uh, no. She's ah! Ah! I don't know. I'm not good at it. And then one of I the got, I got the deep one. Can you keep doing that? <laughs> and then one of the Williams sisters go, like makes a very big Ugh! like huh, like right? like the grunting. Yeah. yeah. Why it's, do they do that? Is it to psych the other side out? No, it's for force. It's it's, <laughs> it's force. Like, um. It's to get that last, that yeah. little bit extra out. That last of, little bit of energy. Like I do that for 10 reps. It, it just helps me. <laughs> did <laughs> did they 10? try to ban her from doing it? Didn't they say that she was too distracting when she was doing that? When this, when I, this I really have no idea. <laughs> I don't follow tennis. It's like ping I don't pong. either. I should, well, I guess. Some people but... like it. Isn't this a radio, sports radio show? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. Hey, stick around here at 1580 for... Yeah, whatever. but I don't know how many tennis listeners tennis. we have. I think we're more into the team sport. No, I think, listens to tennis I think they on did the radio try to ban anyway. her from doing you it. You listen but... to tennis on the radio? This is me watching tennis. <laughs> and now you're on the radio and nobody can see what and you're then, doing. And then, and then Gabby calls me up and charges me for a stretch therapy. I did left to right today. So, so but Gabby, yeah. just, just to finish up with the noises, um, don't you think, though, when your clients are sort of giving you colorful language, it's just... Like it's a healthy thing, right? It's like getting it out. It's like leaving it on the floor, right? Please tell me that's okay because I am yeah. definitely guilty of that. <laughs> I'm certainly not offended by it. No, I mean unless you're cussing me out, but I know it's all. It's about the exercise, you know. I know you really love me, except that's when we do burpees, and then I really do mean it. So it's well, okay. okay, that's fair. That's I fair. Yeah, it. if you're doing burpees. burpees, yeah, usually it is because you hate me, but only at that moment. <laughs> Burpees, it's a long moment. Richard, if you tell me you love burpees, I'm just going to reach through the screen and, and hit you. Chris saw me do burpees last night when I was working out. Chris, when you see him later, can you just hit him for me, please? 
Absolutely. Nobody likes doing They didn't like that I mean, hockey but, player this but week. But here's another thing about noise. I want to move over to Kristen with noise. We were talking about noise on vacation. Like, obviously, there's some good noise and some bad noise. But <laughs> yeah. there's noises you can avoid if you know what to do before you get there. Right. So what do you right. do for people to help them avoid the noises they don't want to hear on vacation? Well, sometimes when people ask to be right in the middle of the ship, the cruise ship, well, a lot of the cruise ships have elevators right there in the middle. Do you really want to be by the elevators where you're hearing everybody come in and out, in and out, in and out? So you kind of want to, you know, avoid those. You don't want really want to be above one of the uh, nightclubs or below the pool because you're going to hear the scraping of the pool chairs uh, oh, all the time. Yeah. You don't want to be in the front where you can hear the anchor going up and down. So basically yeah. we're staying with the captain, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, the higher up you get, it tends to decrease the noise. But then when you're in the front of the bow, if you're seasick, you don't want to be in the front because that's where you will feel. If you're going to feel movement, you're going to feel it in the front of the ship. Now, in the back of the ship, you might hear uh, a very steady hum from the engine. And sometimes people like that because it's white noise and it just pops them right off to sleep. So it's kind of, uh, I kind of have to talk with them and see exactly what they like. That's so interesting because I bet a lot of people who don't work with a travel agent and just do something like online, I, I, is noise a question even when you're filling out an application for a room? No. It's so you not. just pick anywhere. Yeah, no, it's just you pick a category and sometimes if you don't pick the right promotion or offering, the cruise line will pick the cabin for you. Uh, oh. Sometimes you don't have a choice at all. So it's, it's kind of hard. Kristen, when you book, when somebody looks online at a consumer site, is it telling you don't pick this room because it's by the elevator? You you as a consumer have no idea. No, not really. The, the only time that you're going to see anything uh, about location related is like on airlines. Like, okay, this seat doesn't recline all the way back or any of them anymore? by the bathroom or something <laughs> like that. So, but on cruise ships, no. Uh, also with hotels. Um you really, do you want to be by the elevators? Um, those online travel agencies that say, oh, you can book this room for only $79. Well, guess what? You might actually get a broom closet right by the, not literally, but it's going to yeah. be the worst possible room in that hotel. What we about to, hotels uh, are kind of hard. We to, were in Denver. We stayed at a hotel. We booked it on hotels.com. You know, a, a major brand like. Uh, well, we were with a convention. I mean, it was with a convention. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we went through a hotel. Okay. Well, yeah. you're trying to kill her and break yes. our friendship. It was with a. Well, we never do that. We, it was we a train. It was that. a. It was a training thing, and it was a, a nice hotel, a double tree, you know, a nice upscale hotel. And we get there, we check in, we're like, well, it's, it's a double tree. It should be an upscale hotel. We get in, it's just like comfort in or whatever, and there's earplugs, and we're like, I never saw a, a, a hotel do earplugs. Well. What we didn't know is in Denver, it's a long, flat area. Even though you're in the mountains, for miles, you, you could see everything. Around 10 o'clock at night, the freight trains start. Loud horns, because there's a crossing all night long. We went down to the front desk. I thought I was in my cousin Vinny. I, I was like, did these make <laughs> noise all night? So they said, no, we'll move you to the front of the building. It's like, all right, cool. The next night, just as loud. It, it was awful. And um, and we had earphones, but we couldn't sleep. It was impossible. And we did not read the reviews because why would you read the reviews of a place like a Doubletree? It's a decent hotel. And you figure the people who are throwing the event would look into this. And it was awful. Everybody comes down for class. They're baked. Nobody got a night's sleep. <laughs> and then I looked on reviews on the way home and one star across the board just because of the noise. Like who said, hey, here's an empty spot with echoing trains and freight trains near a crossing. Let's put a hotel here. Great idea. What so, about yes. like what about like construction? If there's like hotels that have construction next to them too, right? Oh, yeah. Sometimes they don't know the construction schedule, and if that happens, go down to you know, say you arrive and you notice it's construction. Go to your room, but don't don't set anything down. Don't go to the bathroom. Don't do anything. Walk right back down to the front desk. And 
be nice. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, they might be able to help you uh, because we've they've probably been yelled out already because of the construction. And, and it's not something the front desk has any control over, but they can try to get you farther away. Uh, as, as a rule, I think everyone should approach people being nice because yes. I, I have seen in hotels where we have been nice, just not even overly nice, just decently nice. And they're like, oh my God, you're the nicest person I spoke to all day. I'm upgrading your room. And I'm like, okay. But definitely just, not just overly Just because nice. I said, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Richard, Rich. what's up? Do, do some of the vendors you use uh, notify you of um, potential issues going on at the resort? Never. Well, yeah, I think some, actually, oh. some do. Please some please. do. Um, as a travel agent, I can actually get in and actually talk with the hotel manager and find out what's going on. Um, Sandals is a very good one that will notify the travel agents that, hey, there's some issues with the pool. We have to fix it. So there's going to be some noises. And they also let their clients know too. I found Sandals. We've I've stayed at Sandals a few times and we've also gone to other all-inclusive resorts. You know what? I go with, I would never, I wouldn't even entertain going anywhere but Sandals because from the other places, they just have this like level of quality that's just white glove all the way through. So yeah, we went to uh, another place. I won't, I don't remember the name of the place, but it was in, um, where was it? Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic. This was a five-star place. It was a dump. Yeah. The room stank. The it only the only good news was they had like an adults only beach. And I don't mean like it was a naked beach or anything. It was just a beach away from the kids because it yeah. was one of those. We were on a it was a convention that we were with. So we, didn't have a choice. We, we had to bring there had to be kids where we so. But anyway, but getting back to getting back to I have a question about trains, though, because now we mentioned trains. Does anybody mm -hmm. travel by train anymore? Your dad. Yes. So people do travel by train. So you've got Amtrak in the United States and then you've got. um Oh, I've rail lost by Europe. Yeah. Eurorail. Euro Eurorail in Europe. And then Canada has their, um, I can't remember. Canada also has a rail system. So you can actually travel around by trains. And the trains nowadays, they're nice. They are really, really nice. I wonder what's, you know, we hear all about airlines and we hear all about hotels and capacity, but we really haven't heard anything about train travel. If what that's like, I mean, if, if they're doing it, if they're up to capacity, who's going on them, you know, that was very popular. Trains and, and buses were very popular with the senior population when you're taking youth groups and things like that, you know, just not families, but groups traveling. And I'm just wondering when that's all going to, you know, how that is all working out. We used to take the Excella down to uh, Washington, D.C., the high speed train from New York to uh, D.C. It had four stops. That was it. I and made it was, no noise. No, it was <laughs> it was great. And, but I've never done a sleepover on one of those things. Uh, that, that would yeah, be interesting to try. Kristen has booked uh, several sleepover uh, overnight accommodations on Amtrak vacations. Yeah, they, they do it upright because it's, it's one of those things where um, you're in your little cabin area and uh, then it converts into your bed for overnight travel. And it's just, it's. It sounds very twenties, nineteen twenties, nineteen thirties. You know, there, stranger is, on a train, train in the forties. Very bar, exciting. Is there a bar car? Film noir. <laughs> of course, there's a bar That's all car. I you know, at this point, you can bring your own liquor on, and you have your own <laughs> entertainment you, with your you iPod. Know, but we are running out of time. We're going oh, to. Oh, well, segment. we should we should do a train trip. We should Why do not? We should do a Grand trip. Canyon. I'd like thing. to get out of my. Mm -hmm. new they have yes, a bullet train from Kyoto or from Tokyo to Kyoto, which is pretty cool. It's like the fastest train in the world or something. We've taken that. It's it's that pretty cool. cool. Oh, we it's did. Uh, we we did, gotta go. We, we got going. We did impressive. Florence to uh, Florence to Rome. To Rome. We did yeah. Florence, Florence to Rome, Rome on high speed. That was cool. That was that was really that's really fun cool. too. Who do we got next? Well, we're talking about noises. We're talking oh. about all kinds of crazy noises today. Right. And Richard and I have a lot of noises about houses. Because most right. people that were who are listening to us live in a house, whether you're owning it or renting it, and the easiest thing in the world to do when some when you hear something is to pretend you didn't. Yep, that's right. Okay. Like what kind of noise? Um, but I will give you an example of pretending of knowing that I heard a noise and taking action. So, <clears throat> I heard a noise that was in my kitchen cabinet, oh. and it was a scratch, 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 scratch. What do you think that was? Now I chose not to ignore it because it was a mouse. So if you hear, and I know nobody wants to know that they heard this, but if you hear that Scratchy. coming from behind the walls, what do you think, Richard? 
that it's it's probably going to lead to a dead animal eventually <laughs> and a stinky stinky experience so yeah you want to take that take care of that uh, also bees bees can get in and create a hive in the walls too so if you're hearing a humming sound uh, that is something you want to take care of right away uh, because that can cause some damage uh, in 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 your home as well so so those are the those are the critters that make noise what other critters let's see we know scorpions don't make any noise roof rats Roof rats. Roof rats. Roof rats. Mm-hmm. You'll hear them crawling up in the attic. I've dealt with that. And sometimes they crawl along by the air conditioner. So you hear this like tinny sound. And, and listen, we're not just telling our listeners this to gross them out, although I find this really pretty disgusting. The point is that I'm here to help you protect your home. So yeah. while you don't want to deal with it, and believe me, nobody doesn't want to deal with mice more than me. I actually hid in my bedroom, jumped on my bed, locked my door because I was sure the mouse was going to be able to open the door and called the exterminator and cried. <laughs> But here's the deal. Ignoring it will not make it go away. They don't go away because they're being ignored. (laughs) They stay and they grow. So that's a problem that if you don't take care of Mr. Mouse, Mr. Mouse is going to have Mrs. Mouse and all the little mouse kids are going to come along. And then you're going to have a much more expensive problem. Right. Exactly. And sometimes the the damage that these critters cause may not be covered by your home insurance because there's an, typically an exclusion for vermin and, and rodents and, and so forth. But there's other noises that we should be listening for in the home, like uh, knocking and banging of pipes. Uh, a lot of times you'll hear that around your water heater. You'll hear it, hear it um, making some noises. A lot of times that is um, sediment buildup and a, a sign that your water heater is is getting old and will be malfunctioning soon, potentially causing a leak and doing some damage to your home. So definitely when you start hearing noises, you need to not ignore them like Felicia uh, has suggested that a lot of people do. It, definitely don't ignore some of those noises. The dripping. You know, it's really funny, though, because you have to be careful what you think the noises are, because I heard banging coming from what I thought was my water heater and it was my dryer. Oh, my God. That same thing yeah. happened to me. And I was living alone and I was scared and I was in my room crying with my dogs. And it turned out to be the dryer going. <laughs> never been so scared in my life. Apparently, women like to just, we just like to hide in our rooms whenever we hear a noise that we can't explain, which is what all the horror movies are about. Don't hide in your room. Leave the house. Yeah, here's one. You know? Here's one. When we live back in New York, we got a noise followed by an odor. And it was this buzzing noise. I couldn't figure it out. And I go downstairs and I smell something burning. And I pull the panel off the fuse of the circuit breaker box. The circuit breaker actually failed. It melted and it was glowing red. And because I have high school electrical <laughs> experience, I knew exactly what to do. But it was a circuit breaker that should have tripped and it did not. And it actually melted. We were five minutes away from a house fire. And you heard this buzzing. It was the weirdest noise throughout the house. It was the circuit breaker trying to trip itself, and it just didn't. So, Any humming uh, or buzzing, you you should pay attention to that noise because potentially it's an electrical issue. And, uh, again, uh, that would be something that would be covered by a home insurance claim. But Having a fire in your home, no matter how small, is super inconvenient. So you want to avoid these things and take care of your property. Nobody wants to have this happen. So don't ignore it, particularly humming and buzzing, running water. Uh, Sometimes uh, you can hear water leaking in pipes or maybe running. We, We had a situation in our kitchen where I could hear water running very slightly and the water the floor was warm where i was hearing the noise that indicated a leak sounds like your sounds like your house was peeing on your feet it it, it was right in the slab <laughs> and so we had to to call out a plumber and it didn't really cause damage to the home yet cuz we caught it early but we had to re repipe that area it was a couple thousand dollar repair job you know now that the weather is getting warmer because we've had a couple of warm days <clears throat> and we're going to fly back into some cooler days, I'm sure, before we <clears throat> ratchet up all the way. I would I'd really recommend to our listeners, and I know we're doing it, turn on your air conditioner. <clears throat> Let it run for a day because you might have some vibrations. 
you might hear some squealing. You might find out that there's a belt loose. You might find out you're low on refrigerant. And I think it's a lot better to find out in March than in May. Actually, our inspection is this Saturday. Yeah. Remnant, exactly. our Having mine tomorrow. Huh? Household, uh, household equipment that you have should be looked at every uh, every six months or so, particularly your furnace and air conditioning unit. Just like be, your car. You've got to check it. Look Absolutely. at us. We're responsible homeowners and car owners. I'm proud of us. You know, you know. here's a noise that I'm going to bring up. It's windy out, and now you hear something scraping against the side of your house. Trees. That's a great... Around the perimeter of your house. And if it's... Go out there when it's windy, because that's a really good judgment of how close you know, the, these boughs are bending towards your house and uh, trim them back because we've had siding ripped off the side of our house from a small branch. The branch was maybe, you know, I don't know, the size of a pepperoni or something, but it just wasted a whole part of our uh, siding. And it cost me like $800 to have that fixed. Richard. That's a great point, Steve. A lot of insurance companies prior to COVID, they would do their periodic inspections of homes that they would insure. One of the things they're looking for is trees that are overhanging and hanging on the roof because it will shorten the life of many roofs out there. That that branch constantly rubbing, being blown on on the tile tile roof or a regular asphalt shingle roof will shorten the life and they want those trimmed back. Anything a, around the, the roof line should be trimmed back. Uh, makes everything last longer, and your insurance company loves it. Yeah, we keep ours uh, fairly trimmed. I mean, we're, we're good with that. Um, and 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 one other noise: shut all your water off and go to the water meter and hear if it's still running. We found a problem with our drip lines for the sprinkler, even though it was off. The timer was off, but the valves were stuck open, and water was going out to a bunch of the cactus, and that's why some of them died because it wasn't shut off. So these are all little nice little hints and tips. Uh, what if you hear a little, now, um, what about, does that who remembers being in school and hearing the fluorescent lights overhead going, bzzz, mm -hmm. you should not hear them in your house. You shouldn't have fluorescent lights. Well, in no, but you should, scary. but there is, there is, if you hear any buzzing coming from your lights in your house, that's a sign of a loose connection. Yes, it is. So again, not to be ignored. I know this is really upsetting because I'm telling everyone not that hopefully people will be going around their house with a stethoscope and looking for noises. <laughs> but all these noises are symptoms. You know, the most important, the most important valuable asset you have besides your life and your family, obviously, is your home. That's where the majority of your money is. That's your biggest investment. Invest in it. Invest a little now or it's going to cost you later because uh, and a lot of people, we have a lot of new people coming into the Valley all the time. And let me say this, in case you don't know it, the heat is brutal in the summer and it does a tremendous amount of damage to our homes. If you've ever seen a home that hasn't been attended to between the months of May to July, and that's all it takes, you will want <laughs> find a home that, that has bad smells, that has scorpions, that has rodents running through it. The all pool. kinds of things happen real fast in the heat when you don't take when you don't take care of the house. Well, rock me to sleep. So now. well, it's just really important. You know what? But if everyone takes care of their home, keep it, you know, keep it nicely cool. Don't don't have it over hot. Some people like they're like, oh, we don't need an air conditioner in our house. These homes are made like you have to have a little bit of coolness. You can't survive in a house like this at 112 degrees. You can't it's survive just, at 112 degrees. Yeah, anyway. We just don't have the insulation. <laughs> Yeah. Or to, to sustain that. Absolutely. So Alicia, another gonna... another noise too to consider because many homes in the valley are have gas uh, supplied to them. You want to be listening for any sort of uh, hissing noise. If you hear that, then uh, you, and or a smell, they put a smell in the gas so that you can uh, so that you know if there is a potential leak. But that noise could also be an initial trigger that something is seriously wrong. Oh, I would run out of my house if I Absolutely. heard Absolutely, you, you have listen, to, that's all listen, it would take. I'm gonna say right now, I'm gonna tell everybody, cause I do all the time. If you have gas in your house, you must, absolutely must have a carbon monoxide detector. There is no two ways about it. It saved our life. Oh yeah. Steve and I would be dead without one. This, Middle of the night in true Chandler. True story, this was hysterical. We, we have a gas, we had a gas stove. We didn't realize, we thought we turned it all the way off, but apparently not quite. 
two o'clock in the morning. We're sound asleep. Banging on the doors. Which so, is the noise you don't want to hear. I don't know who it is. So I go to the kitchen and grab a knife. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with this. So I'm opening the, the door and, and I'm like ready Freddy to stab Krueger. somebody. <laughs> and it's all these fire department guys. They're like, and they just barge in. They're like, your house stinks of gas. Get everybody out. I'm like, what are you talking about? And they come in like fans, everything in like two seconds. And I'm like, I don't smell they anything. They open up all our windows, all our doors. In, in like, like in insane. like a minute. And I, I go, I don't smell anything. The guy goes, get out of the house. I go outside. He goes, come back in. I couldn't believe it. We never smelled the thing. Yeah, we we didn't been notice dead. it. Without that monoxide, carbon monoxide detector. Because we had all the windows shut. hardwired to Central Station. Thank you, Chandler Police uh, Fire Department. Yes. Let me tell you. Scared the hell out of us. Our neighbors were all freaking out. And. What's funny is we ended dinner at like, I don't know, seven o'clock and we were hanging out watching TV till like 1030 before we went to bed. And the whole time the gas was on. I had no, wow. noise. I had no noise. That's an incredible story. It is the silent killer. Yeah. So yeah. anybody who can hear me, please, it's not that expensive. And it really, me, my my daughter, my my son, Stephen, I'd be, that'd be it. We'd be gone. There'd be no show now. You'd be There'd listening be no show. to sports. <laughs> But we it's it's true. We have one in our main floor and I also have one in the garage. We don't park our car in the garage, but I have a lot of chemicals and stuff, you know, paints and stains and aerosol stuff. And uh, although they don't emit carbon monoxide, they if a can leaks, it could it will trigger um, a carbon monoxide detest, detector in some cases. So it's important to have that. And of course, some of the other noises when you go in your garage doors going up and down, if you start hearing that buckling and creaking groaning and moaning bucking and jerking what if you hear gurgling from the toilet uh, that's a sound you never want to hear you are you on toilet. the toilet if you're gurgling from the toilet <laughs> are you on, yeah, good question are you on the toilet <laughs> that, that could mean air air somewhere in the line perhaps so that could be dairy <laughs> <laughs> yes it, it, it does mean it does mean that there could be air in the lines it also means something could be blocking the lines. It could be roots blocking the lines. Well, how did air get into the lines? A worn out toilet valve. There could be a lot of reasons. The point is, Chipotle. if anybody's ever seen a toilet explode, and I don't mean the explosive stuff that goes Indian in a toilet, food. I mean the toilet itself exploding, that is a lot of water damage that you're looking at. And, the, cheapest um, thing is, the cheapest part would be replacing the toilet. The damage is going to be way more expensive. Oh, some yeah. sad news. Remember Roger Mudd, the newscaster? No. No, he's dead. Anyway. Um, okay, yes. so how we entertain ourselves. And That's here's a cool great. thing. Other noises, if you have a house with heat, radiators. We lived in an old house. This house was built in like 1901 or something. We were living in Long Island. Me and Felicia never had a house with steam heat before. So, no, 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 no. It's not just, we're, we're in a nice bed. It's nice and warm. All of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, scared that. the bejesus out of us. We had no idea because we never we lived thought we were in something. Being gassed, I call the landlord up at like one in the morning. What the hell's going on? He's like, the freaking steam, you idiot. Click. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. So we've had that before. Another noise but you the, should never hear is a humming in your refrigerator. Refrigerators should not make noise. So if you hear a humming in your refrigerator, it's got refrigerators have tons of electrical advice, devices mm -hmm. now more than ever. Remember, if you don't fix it, chances are it will get worse and there goes all your spoiled, beautiful food. Exactly. So basically we're telling you, if you hear a noise, really check it out. Yeah, noises, take care of it. Noises are warnings. They're the canary in the coal mine for your house. Houses, your cars, car. they don't fix themselves, you know? Oh. And, 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 you know, I flew, we, we, before pandemic, we used to fly a lot and I'm, I'm really interested in aircraft and I would watch people when there was noises on the plane, they'd get all nervous. And I studied a lot of, airplane noises on different things. I was able to tell, you know, oh, don't worry, that's a fuel transfer pump, stuff like that. But there's some noises on aircraft you don't want to hear. Ask anyone on United flying to Honolulu lately. Um, if you hear a banging noise on a plane, you may want to get off. <laughs> if you can. If you can. <laughs> hey, but you know what? In all fairness, in all fairness, the plane landed safely, which no just, problem. just shows you on one engine. that it works. And that's Fail a fail safe works. That triple seven is a huge. If you've ever flown on one of those, Richard and Kristen, I'm sure you have. Those are four or five, what are they, eight across? It's a big plane, two engines, and that thing landed safely on one. Kudos to those captains. Well, we're just about out of time, but I want to make one last pitch. College bound, college bound AZ, 
we are all in it for the kids. So it's, it's going to make our, it makes our world better when our kids are educated and they can move forward in life and all they have need is an opportunity. So college bound for the opportunity. Um, I want to thank Kristen Morris from Arizona Cruise and Travel. Oh my God, you guys, you're great. Don't ever go anywhere else. Just we're, call we, Kristen. She knows everything. We already booked our vacation for 22. We're very yes. excited. And Richard, you're always fun to talk to. It's it's great to talk about houses. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to sell the one behind you, but maybe if we get it fixed, <laughs> give me a call. Once it's pre-built, it'll be fine. And Gabby's always a slice of spice every time we talk. And cracking and popping and hissing and. <laughs> yeah, she's only got all kinds of things. And let me ask you one question: Why do your why do your knuckles go like when when you do that with your knuckles? Is there a reason for that? I don't know. Air bubbles. Is everybody <laughs> pulling on their knuckles now? I don't like do that crack, at all. Cracking anyway. your neck. I don't know. It really grosses me out. There are people who make all kinds of noises. As you get older, you make all kinds of noises. As we're getting older, we're noticing each of us are making more noises than we used to. So, And I'm sure you all know that. Mostly farting noises. Farting, snoring. It's not that big a deal anymore. <laughs> you know, it's just... Uh, <laughs> like, it's like a house gas leak. What can I tell you? <laughs> All right. Well, we're about out of time. I want to thank everybody for coming on. And of course, you know, please, uh, you know, use our sponsors. I you think know. next week we're going to talk about either, what are we talking about? Noise or vision? What you shouldn't see or what you shouldn't smell? Can't decide. We'll have to think know. about we'll that. We're going to talk about the crew's going to get together. We're going to decide what we're going to talk about, things that you should look out for. Now stick around here at 1580. Lots of sports, you know, baseball. And we have a super cool surprise guest next week. Too. <laughs> do we really? Yeah, I do. Yes. And we're going to start betting on how many times Felicia interrupts me per show again. So thanks to everybody for joining. Stick around here at 1580 The Fanatic. Great, great place. Great time. Um, we'll see you all next week. And remember, everybody, drive friendly, Arizona. Bye. Thank you for listening to Drive Friendly with Steve and Felicia. Visit drivefriendlyaz.com for live shows, past shows, and more about our host and guests.